Hello. Today I'm going to show you how I managed to make a 1 amp hour zinc ion supercapacitor battery hybrid. This is not your typical homemade lemon battery. This thing is the real deal. This thing can do a lot more than just run an LED. It can run motors for hours on end and even power a light bulb. As a disclaimer, I would like to state that I am no chemist. Battery making is only just a hobby of mine, but I feel I've had some pretty significant results. So let's see how I did it. The main components that make this run are zinc ions and carbon. For current collection, I use graphite foil, which collects the current from both the carbon and zinc. Next is carbon felt, which is used in air purifiers. Next is zinc sulfate, the electrolyte, which provides zinc ions. Sodium sulfate to increase ionic conductivity. Ultrafine coconut carbon. Synthetic graphite. And optional manganese dioxide. All of these ingredients were ordered on eBay and Amazon. The cost of this battery cell is under $1. I'll start by measuring 15 grams of coconut carbon. This is the main ingredient. Next, I'll add 6 to 7 grams of graphite and manganese dioxide. Stir the ingredients well. Now we're going to turn this into a paste using our electrolyte. First, I'll add a heaping tablespoon of zinc sulfate to distilled water in a 20 dram pill bottle. Stir the electrolyte until the solution becomes clear. After that, I'll add roughly a tablespoon of sodium sulfate. This electrolyte is highly concentrated because the design is three-dimensional and has high resistance. So we need all the ionic conductivity we can get. To create the paste, we'll start by pouring a small amount of the electrolyte in and stirring. Carbon powder can take a long time to absorb, so be patient. Once you start to see clumps forming, continue to add the electrolyte while stirring. The paste should have the consistency of peanut butter. Next, we'll spread the paste on both sides of the carbon felt. Push down hard to ensure the paste gets in the felt. Once that's done, grab your graphite foil plate and wrap scotch tape around the base of the leads of all your foils. Graphite foil is very weak. Doing this should help protect it. It's time to connect the positive current collector. Sandwich the graphite foil between the two carbon felts. Next, use three pieces of yarn to tie the carbon felts in place.
Because the carbon has no binder, we need to create a paper envelope to hold everything together and seal it. The paper will also act as a separator between positive and negative. The paper envelope should overlap by about one centimeter on the side and the bottom. Now we need to seal the envelope. Run hot glue along the top edges of the side and bottom. Now fold the edge along the seam of the carbon felt and glue it. It's very important that there are no leaks in this envelope. If there is, the carbon will dissolve into the electrolyte and the battery will die. To make sure it's sealed, we'll run some glue along the folded seam. And finally, completely seal off the top with glue. Once again, using three strings, we'll secure the envelope onto the carbon felt beneath it. This will help keep everything secure and stop from bloating when gassing occurs. As something optional, I'm going to place some copper tape along the top of the lead. This will help create a secure connection to whatever electrical devices you're connected to. In this battery design, there is no active material on the negative electrodes. We simply place a graphite foil on each side of the positive electrode. When charging, these negative electrodes will form zinc metal, which turns this all-carbon capacitor into a zinc ion battery. Let's weigh the finished device. 65 grams, not bad for a homemade 1 amp hour 2.2 volt battery. The housing you use for your battery is completely up to you. I'm going to use a vacuum seal bag. It's worth noting that this is not completely sealed. In fact, I would not recommend completely sealing this device due to off-gassing during charging. Now we need to add electrolyte to the battery in its housing. This design does need to be completely immersed. It's finally time to charge this battery. On the first charge, I usually set it to 2.8 volts. This battery maxes out at 2.4 volts, but will settle at 2.2. This battery is drawing over 1.2 amps, and it's not showing any sign of falling. This is a sign that the battery has good capacity. I hope you enjoyed this video. In the next video, I would like to scale things up to a 12-volt storage battery. 
Let me know in the comments what else you would like to see from this battery technology.